Welcome! My name is Kelly. I'm Emma. And I'm Nathan. And this is Fanimated, an animation fan podcast where we get a chance to geek out about our favorite animated media. And this is a Watch a Watch In, where we're going to discuss um, all of the crazy things that we've been watching <laughs> recently. All three um, of us? All yes. three of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's the anime trio. Yeah! We're here and ready to chat. But before we get into all the crazy stuff, um, thank you to those who have left Apple reviews recently. Um, I'm going to read those, so quick shout out. Um just Your Neighborhood Fangirl says, I love this podcast. You guys should do least favorite anime, OP, and EDs. I love the episodes when you talk about your faves, and I lived for them. I need more of that smiley face. Thank you. And also, you. <laughs> I would agree that the opening and ending top 10 episodes are my favorite as well. Emma and I have fun. Oh my gosh, they are a blast every time. I want to do more of that kind of thing, but also doing our least favorites is not really a fanimated type thing to do. <laughs> I know, we're here to geek out, you know? I want to talk about the things that I love instead of like talking about the things I don't love. Like, you know? <laughs> yeah, that all makes sense. And honestly, if something is your least favorite, I would be skipping it and wouldn't remember what it was anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Um, but thank you for leaving a review. That's very kind. And the coffee box um, wrote quite the long winded, beautiful, it's wonderful review. Um, so I'm going to paraphrase. <laughs> um, basically, they really like Undertale. And it's just I'm so happy to hear people like the kind of game I like because some of my family members and friends don't even know this game. Um, and and like going on with that that's kind of like why I started fan baited in the first place like because sometimes you just have this deep passion for something that no one else even knows about or understands um like last week Jamie and I were talking about the infinity train and we're like why does nobody know what this show is you know like <laughs> it's just nice to be able to hear other people even if they are just on a podcast that geek out about what you love too so Thank you guys for leaving reviews. It's very kind. And I read them all and they make my day and they make me want to make more episodes. So <laughs> the more you review, you review, the more that I, episodes I'll make. Ha ha ha. And we also, uh, I have not played Deltarune yet, but that's going to have to be on the docket since so many people love Undertale. Y'all Undertale fans are real and you're here and it's great. Okay. So with all that out of the way, guys. What have you been watching? Nathan, what have you been playing? Oh, I've been playing <laughs> um, a game well-awaited. We've been talking about it on the podcast for over a year. Pokemon <laughs> Snap yes. is finally out. <laughs> <laughs> it is the most amazing like 20-year sequel to the original N64 Pokemon Snap. It is just... An absolutely beautiful game where you sit in a cart and it travels through a fantasy land where filled with Pokemon and you simply take pictures of them. And of it course. is super relaxing and incredibly fun and like a real game this time. Like the last, Ooh. the original game was sort of, um, you know, that sort of like arcadey game style of like, oh, you play like a level or something. And this one like had sort of progression and challenges and different, you know, achievement thons that modern games sort of have, um, which is really fun. And then way more levels, way more Pokemon from almost every generation, I think, um, which is just always fantastic to see. People are complaining that the Pokemon Sword and Shield developers should have used all of the 3D models from the Pokemon Snap and they're <laughs> comparing and contrasting <laughs> the two and being like, ah, oh, how crap is all this? <laughs> also, it had some of the absolute best memes because they brought back the original character from the N64 like playthroughs, like the original photographer guy. And then oh, wow. there's like him in his like beautiful 3D modern animation. And so the <laughs> meme was just like, be careful who you call ugly in high school as it compares <laughs> the two. 
<laughs> he just glowed up. <laughs> <laughs> and so okay. it's it's amazing it's just perfect nostalgia um most of the game devolves into you just donking pokemons with apples at the end to try and get them to eat them <laughs> or react to them or move around the map and it's just it was a bunch of fun to play through everything oh that's awesome that's awesome what's been your like favorite pokemon moment or discovery or you know, because they do certain things based on what you do, right? Yes. Um, well, I have a coworker who's obsessed with Bulbasaur. So the entire game, I'm just like looking for Bulbasaurs. And then they appear one trail. You eventually get it. And I'm getting this Bulbasaur just like hopping along in my face. And I'm like taking pictures with both in the game and with my phone to try and send her <laughs> and just being like, look at it, look at him. <laughs> Bulbasaur is here. I found him. Oh, fun. That's fun. Were there plenty of um, uh, Charizards for you? There um, is like a lava mount- mountain level. And so you had to work a little bit to get the Charizards. And then the Charizards are facing off against like this T-Rex type Pokemon. And doing epic aerial battle as you're trying to snap photos of them <laughs> like fighting each other so it's it was yeah there's a couple charizards nice so just to be clear the point of this game is you rove around and take pictures of pokemon yep exactly oh wow that's cute <laughs> It is literally a photo safari video <laughs> game, but instead of animals, it's Pokemon. But of course. And then the professor like rates all your photos at the end and gives you like points and stars and levels and different. And then you put them in your pokey. Uh, it's not a pokey dex because it's oh, it's a photo dex. And mm. so it's just all your photos that you can go through of every single Pokemon. You got to catch them all on camera. Yep. <laughs> oh. uh, that's awesome i'm really glad you're enjoying it that sounds super fun especially since it's like the nostalgic connection too all right emma and i uh spent a weekend recently finishing watching hiyoka yes we did and we need to talk about it <laughs> <laughs> emma what's hiyoka about <laughs> That's a great question, Kelly. By watching the whole series, I'm not even sure myself, um, but I will do my best to explain it. Um, okay, think like we've got this club at a high school. Classic setting, yes. Um, they're called the Classic Lit Club, but they don't do anything with Classic Lit. It's fine. It's normal. In fact, they just decide to solve mysteries every day. There's this one main character who is curious about everything. And there's this other character who is just like, I will do whatever it takes to spend the least amount of energy. So he doesn't do a lot. (laughs) He's like, his motto is if I don't have to do it, I won't. And if I do have to do it, I will finish it as quickly as possible. (laughs) But because of the influence of this young girl who is super curious and he has, you know, a crush on her, Obvious. That's what's happening. Um, he puts in more effort to solve these mysteries because he's super intelligent and pieces things together really well. And it's just really fascinating to see how he solves the puzzle in every single episode or every single story arc. This girl has this classic phrase of, I just have to know. And every time she says that, there's like a spark that happens and then we dive into the mystery. Now, here's the thing that kind of made me upset. <laughs> At the beginning of the show, there is so much imagery everywhere and so much spooky music that I was like, what is happening? Like, and, and Kelly and I were making all these theories of like, oh my gosh, yes. maybe this person is a ghost. Maybe this person is from the past. Maybe I was this like, person- time travel, time travel. Yeah, time travel. <laughs> we were like, holy crap, what is happening? Like there was a scene in a cafe where a clock was like, the pendulum was swinging back and forth and suddenly it turned to a heart for a moment. And I was like, oh, what was that? What was that? Something is happening. No, guys, no. It's just the character's imagination. It had no significance. It wasn't a spooky mystery. It just was the mood of the show. It's fine. I'm not bitter at at all. You know, no. Because here's the thing about this show. Hioka is 
a, a typical high school club, whatever, slice of life. But it's directed like a mystery slash, like, it's not horror. It never is scary. They, The only murder they solve is like, not a real murder (laughs) you know like right it's not it's not scary but it is um suspenseful in some places like it's suspenseful and it's a mystery and it's directed that way and the music there's always weird music going on and so you're like everything is significant what's going on it's just like they're just sitting in their club room but it's like the sound is off what's going on yes And, (laughs) and so they like totally it just heightens the heightens the level of drama and seriousness of these very mundane mysteries and it's great (laughs) and what i love too is that it is the classic lit club so they are actually like you know telling you about like certain mystery tropes and narrative functions that are seen often in mystery novels and then you're watching those same narrative plot devices like unfold within the anime so it's like i mean they're training you to try and like piece together everything like they leave all of the details for you to figure it out before the cast does and sometimes we would get it and sometimes we would not (laughs) (laughs) yeah sometimes we'd be way off um but it is really intriguing i mean we spent a good day binging the second half of it because we we couldn't stop like we had to i had to know i have to know <laughs> like <laughs> it's just, and so it's just like kelly said super suspenseful and like that eerie music where you're just like everything must have a meaning there is something going on <sighs> It is. It was a fun trip. I will give it that. Even though I'm a little disappointed that it wasn't like bigger than I thought it was. Um, but it was fun. And it's not just about the plot. Like, obviously, it's like you want to solve the mysteries, but it's just as dedicated to its characters and its character development. And so, like, you know, even our favorite arc of the series, the whole overarching like um, mystery is interesting. But what made it great was that. Um, it was connected to character development of like almost every character. And so it was just like, it's, it's just as much about the characters than it is about the solving the mysteries. So highly recommend. And poor Emma with her romantic heart was a little disappointed when they left the cliffhanger of the couples getting together at the very last episode. It's fine. (laughs) You know, if you're a big romance fan, you're not going to be happy with the ending. Let's just say, (laughs) but That's, you know, you just have to read it then, Emma. I keep telling you, (laughs) just become a manga reader. Uh, Add it to the list. (laughs) Um, So yeah, so definitely check it out. It was a lot of fun. Also, Emma watched The Wind Rises for the first time. Nathan, have you seen The Wind Rises? Nope. Nope. It's a Ghibli film. It was supposed to be Miyazaki's final film. I'm using air quotes. But of course, he never actually stays in retirement. So <laughs> it's not his <laughs> final film. <laughs> um, but uh, that that's a, a classic. It's beautiful. And I liked it a lot more this, this time watching it. But what did you think, Emma? I really enjoyed it. I don't think it's my favorite Ghibli film, but it was still wonderful. And I mean... You know, it's got a romance arc, so of course I'm like all in, you know. I know. I, I'm proud of it. I don't mind. Um, <laughs> and, and But I just thought it was really intriguing to see like a different perspective because this young man is building machines for war, but he's not looking at it through the lens of I'm building to support the army. It's more of like I'm building because I just love to build planes. So... I just thought it was some really interesting perspectives on um, like the engineers and just everything going on really like socially um, in the midst of the war. So um, it was something that felt very real for being uh, an animated film because it related to a lot of events in history. So I really enjoyed it a lot. It was a beautiful film. When did it come out? Uh, 2013. Oh, so so it's recent for Ghibli films. Yes, it is a more recent um, Ghibli film. Um, and it's 
the latest of Miyazaki's, although he is working on another one. So the film is based off of um, the real life Jiro uh, Horikoshi. And they definitely, it, it, they, they mess around a little with his life. And so it's not completely a- accurate. He like takes this actual uh, person and then merges it with like the plot of a book. And so it's like, it's all of the stuff about like the war. It's, it's all pre World War II and into right into the war. And so he's designing planes. He wants to design planes and he, they do go through that. Um, but like his personal life is completely just made up, um, mostly. <laughs> so, and that's like a really beautiful part of the film too, but it, it's also like just this overarching, like look at Japan, um, in the 1920s and thirties and leading into world war two. And like, what's really fascinating is a lot of world war two films, at least that I've seen that are anime, cause there are a lot of them, um, feel I feel like they focus on the common person um but this one is actually I mean he's high class like he is going to university he they have jobs like there's there are all these horrible things going on in Japan during this time and they're interacting with those people and with those um uh the economic crisis and the earthquakes and all these things but they it's interesting to see from the perspective of they're they're still like above it all kind of and it's and he does interact with um uh, it's just interesting how they show the history through this person's perspective so i think it's a great film um and it, it is very different than other ghibli films it's like slower paced i feel i mean it's long but a lot of them are and it's um although his dreams are pretty fantastical it is you know an actual like war drama i guess yeah more just like a romance drama to be real yeah it's also got a really amazing voice cast too like when we were watching it i was like wow there's a lot of famous people on this list including yeah john krasinski and emily blunt and uh zach callison steven universe <laughs> uh-huh exactly so that was really fun to pick out all of those characters another great ghibli film i'll be honest with you guys i've never seen a ghibli film <laughs> What? Uh, Fuck it all! I did not know this, Nathan. You've committed a crime. <laughs> and what? you call yourself part of the anime trio? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> this needs to be remedied immediately. <laughs> We're having a movie night very soon, Nathan. Just put it on your calendar. Uh, I'm right. shaking. This is a problem. <laughs> Oh no, Nathan! Problem oh, for you too. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Well, uh, the anime police are going to find you, and strap you to a chair, and force you to watch Ghibli films. It's not you'll even going to. You'll love them. It's not like you have to force yourself to watch them. <laughs> you will love them. I feel like, in general, guys, Wait, Ghibli the films or the anime police. <laughs> <laughs> Both, probably. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Dang. Oh, man. I, that surprises me. I feel like Ghibli, of all things, is, is you know, pretty common ground for most people. But I don't know. It's hard to find them streaming. They're not on That's true. some of the typical places. They aren't. That's valid. That's completely valid. But you know what? I guarantee, I guarantee you go to your nearest public library. They will have at least one Ghibli film. <laughs> I literally just got my library card last week. So. Yay! Then go to the library and pick out a Ghibli film and l- report back. We expect yes. this. We uh, expect details. A two-page essay? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Which one would you recommend? I feel like, Nathan, you would enjoy Spirited Away, actually, because Mm. you do watch anime, so you're familiar with all the weird tropes and spirits and things happening. So I feel like you'd do well with Spirited Away. I would not recommend that to a new beginner person. but Who has never seen anime, yeah. Right, but because you know anime, like, I feel like Spirited Away would be great. I don't know. I feel like I don't want to, like, recommend anything depressing. (laughs) 
<laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Like, like, oh, Thank you girl. for knowing me well enough. Because <laughs> my first, sorry, like uh, my first reaction oh, was like, "Oh, Princess Mononoke is like one of the best. It's so good." And then, I, but I don't know. Is that depressing, Emma? It's like I don't yeah. think it's depressing. It is very like much like it makes you think. It is heavier, like because it's like environment versus society and ah uh. yeah well you know what you should listen to you should listen to uh um banter i hardly know her i was on their podcast and we talked about this exact issue is ghibli films for beginners um so go check out that episode everybody and maybe that will help you get an idea i'm in shock and awe all right <laughs> well nathan what have you been watching I've been watching, and I finished it yesterday, season four of Castlevania. Mm -hmm. It was a long time coming, but it was just clearly above and beyond the best season, which (laughs) is really tough to be like, guys, you should watch this show. It's incredibly bloody and gory (laughs) and definitely not for children, and you have to get through at least three seasons before the really good season. (laughs) Um I know that's a hard sell. So I don't know, maybe go look up the fights online. <laughs> but yes. it this season just it culminated all of these different characters that I had really like been drawn to in such like a unique and interesting way where a lot well, one of the most interesting things about this show is that essentially everyone is a villain. Like there's not actually mm. any good people really like your main character of trevor belmont who's like the actual player in the castlevania game is really an anti-hero like he doesn't want to be doing all of this monster hunting but he's literally the only one who can (laughs) and then his little trio of like cypher is like the closest you have to a hero who is a ice fire and electricity mage and she is so awesome (laughs) and then to round out their anime trio is alucard the literal son of dracula who can fly shapeshift and has a flying sword (laughs) belmont's weapons as well is a giant whip that can explode and a boomerang (laughs) boomerang if you can if you can if you can imagine the fight sequences of these three characters where they are constantly flying. You literally have three main characters that can all like fly or have like whips or like flowing robes or really long hair. The animation is immaculate. It is unbelievable. And so you have this trio essentially trying to fight monsters, fight vampires, save the day. Really. They're just trying to save their own skins. Um, And then just an absolute slew of villains that they come up against, which are, some of them are true villains, some of them are anti-villains, some of them are just like people that used to be heroes and now have been betrayed. It's absolutely fantastic. And um, two of my favorite characters throughout the entire show are these humans that are called Forge Masters, who are the ones that have been creating all these night creatures, all these horrible monstrosities that they're letting loose upon the human race for them to destroy and pummel the land for the vampires that are sort of dictating their rules. And so they are humans that are working for the vampires and they both have like grudges against humanity as a race. And so that as they progress throughout all four seasons, they have these huge character arcs from going from absolutely like traumatic and, um, horrid backstories into like a fundamental idea of like what it sort of means to be human after being surrounded by the immortality of vampires for so many years and what they can actually do with their powers and it all culminates into a fight between Isaac one of the most interesting of the two forge masters for me versus Camilla like the big head female vampire countess who is just absolutely powerful and vicious and beautiful I love and her. it's an, <laughs> just a brutal fight between the two for almost an entire episode six and it was so fantastic to watch um so 
I know, Kelly, you started it and stopped. I did. And I know, Emma, you probably don't have the stomach for it. Hey, 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 but... I can handle gore, okay? I'm not a wimp <laughs> over here. Hey, she is watching Vinland Saga, so uh, she can handle gore. I can handle gore. <laughs> All right. I can. I can. It's on Netflix all four seasons. So, okay, challenge uh, accepted. It gets a little weird at points, uh, and it's definitely not for kids, but... We watch anime. It gets weird. <laughs> well, I'm not a kid, and I've seen plenty of weird, so I think we're good. <laughs> so Yeah, I'll need to get back to it, because like I, I enjoyed it. I, you know, I've, I've just been busy re-watching Oran High School Host Club, so... <laughs> My priorities right now <laughs> are oh. being happy. <laughs> also, it ends well. What? Ooh, I what? like that. That just brings it up like, you know, 18 notches because having something end well really makes or breaks it. Yep. That's probably one of the best reasons of the season four is of the best because you're like, it ends well. <laughs> it ends well. Oh, nice. Oh, man. Uh, it's it just sucks when that doesn't happen and I feel like that happens far too often when things don't end well so yeah we'll have to check it out and let you know so that's our homework and your homework is to watch Studio Ghibli, Ghibli. <laughs> yes. listen you only need to watch one movie <laughs> just pick one <laughs> go to the All shelf right. and be like eeny meeny miny mo pick one Emma watching anything else I mean, you all know that I'm watching Fruits Basket, so. <laughs> Surprising <laughs> no one. <laughs> it's the trip, let me tell you. Like this last episode, oh my God, it's fine. We're all it's fine. So good. I'm crying every day. Um, yes. Yeah, so that's my my main event right now, um, besides rewatching The Dragon Prince and mm -hmm. um, finishing High Cube. So, all the good things, all the good things for sure. Yes, I've been reviewing Fruits Basket on the YouTube channel for those of you who are following that. Um, and I'm I'm just so happy about this latest episode. Um, I'm so happy about the whole season, really. And I just, I love these idiots. So I'm... Love them. We love this them. This is one of those, you know, shows where I'm like, it better end well. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. If it they, doesn't, like the fans will have something to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> they will have a riot on their hands but like it's only a few episodes left so i mean we're heading in a good direction they just need to all they need to do they don't even have to like do anything fancy just like stick the landing you know we're just we're not expecting much we're just expecting the best <laughs> 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 I mean, they already gave us a kiss, which never happens in the shoujo anime. I so, know. Like, I don't think there's anything else that we need. Maybe uh, some closure. Closure would be nice. Closure would be good. The problem is, here's the thing about Fruits Basket. We're going on a tangent. I apologize, but like, there are so many characters. There are 12, 13, 14 zodiac quote unquote members. And there's Toru and all of her friends. So, like, how are we going to wrap all this up? <laughs> well, we're getting some closure with some characters early on in the season. So, you know, they're doing it mm -hmm. little by little. Little by little. We're getting there. It's great, though. It's one of the best anime. So get on that if you have not. Or if you don't like Shoujo like Nathan, then you can ignore it. <laughs> but it, it might change your life. You never know, Nathan. Just, just you know, you might enjoy it. You never know. You never know. And we'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> hey! <laughs> Touche. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks, guys. This is so fun. It's always great to hear what uh, people are watching and doing. And um, yeah, I just like to geek out about, you know, what we've been watching. Because we all watch a lot of stuff. So... Uh, we're going to go record a Demon Slayer Mugen Train episode, finally. Mm -hmm. I, I was trying to, trying to find my, my list of things. I need to have it ready next time. <laughs> you got a list. Kelly, don't though. you have this memorized? I, I know I've done it. It's provided by Purple Planet Music. Purple Planet Music. <laughs> Purple Planet Music. <laughs> Um, like the artwork is done by me. You can find me at Candor Draw on Instagram. Yeah, I sound like that. 
follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm not really ever on Twitter, but if you can follow us there if you want. Also, I have a YouTube channel now, so if you want to check me out there, I'm just binging the Whole Fruits Basket thing and, and geeking out about that. You guys, you did great. That's it. That's the end. You forgot about Patreon. You can follow us on Patreon and vote in the Patreon polls that come out every month. And for only $1 a month, you can vote and share your opinion. And get bonus episodes. And, Ooh. I don't know, random other posts. So, yeah, that's patreon.com slash fanimated. Um, and don't forget to review our show. Yeah, it's like all the lovely people at the beginning of this episode. Um, so thank you guys for joining me. And we'll talk to you guys <laughs> next week. In the meantime, stay tuned. And, and stay, stay animated. animated. And, and stay, stay animated. Yeah. <laughs> Can we try that again? You want to do that again? Yep. Okay. Stick the landing. We stuck the landing. <laughs> oh my Finished god. Strong. Yeah.